Okay, I'm going to show you some of my boats. I've had so many requests on uh, on YouTube. To, can you show us some better views of your boats? So I'm trying to go through my shop. I built these many, many years ago, probably almost 20 years ago. And so I'm just going to go through the whole thing there and just see, show them to you and give you some remarks on them and let you see them. Okay, this is a little corner of my shop that I built all this stuff in. Can, I'm going to kind of scan around. It's pretty hard to see the lights aren't all that good. So I'm going to go over here. See, here's some of my tools. All I got a little sander, a little micro drill press, and a jigsaw. And you know, this is my desk. What I do is I, on my desk or table, bench, I make a little thing sticking out, a little peninsula on it. And that way I can stand on both sides of the boats as I'm doing work on them. So this is just, just all different stuff I got. It's not a very big, big space there, but you don't need a whole lot of space. You don't need a whole lot of time. It takes probably about five or six hundred hours to build a boat like this one here. And I'm going to show you some bigger ones upstairs. Okay, all the real fine, small strips of wood in that, we're all cut on this saw here. Using a Diablo seven and a quarter inch blade, real thin blade, all those seven, these are regular skill, uh, skill saw blade, and they're very thin. And after I start using them on there, and then I found out how nice they are, that was 20 years ago, and so I've left the blade on there ever since. That's the only kind of blade I use on there, and I recommend anybody that's got a 10 inch blade on your saw, just take it off and put this t seven and a quarter inch Diablo blade. Just get that, uh, it, what's called a framing blade. It's a 24 tooth rip blade. It, it works real good, I mean perfect for ripping, but it still does some cross cutting. But on a bench saw you don't do that much cross cutting, but it'll still do a good job. So this is the best saw. This is an ordinary table saw. You don't have to have any special table saw for it. Now, if you want more, if you want more information, go to my YouTube and cutting thin strips on a table saw, and you'll find all, lots of information. It shows you just exactly how to cut these very, very fine, thin strips on there, and also on taming your table saw that has it on there too. Now, this is a small replica of the Constitution that I bought in when I was in New Zealand one time. And I thought it was built pretty nice. I brought it home and, and I started looking at it and I was thinking, I bet you I could do better than that. So that's what got me started on that. So then from there on I start making, making uh, boat kits. And I'll show you some of those. Now here's two of the boat kits I, I made. This is an Endeavor. I think that was Captain Cook's boat if I remember right. They're real nice. They're about, a, oh, about 15, 16 inches long. And this one here is a Mayflower. Of course, you know what that one is, all the pilgrims came over on. And see now, you see boats in there? <laughs> Those are not lifeboats. They never had lifeboats on these kind of ships. Those are just boats that take down in the water to go ashore to pick up supplies because they can't get close to the shore that way. Okay, now this is the first scratch built boat I made. That scratch built means you're making all the parts for it. You don't buy any parts for it. Everything is all handmade. Maybe like some very small stuff. You can buy a few small parts for it, but mostly it's all handmade. And you can see the little boat behind. All those are hand carved, each one in the All these little things are all tied. The little dead men there. The little things going up the road to those round circles, those are all handmade. It's all handmade here, all the little tiny parts like that. And this is a lake, a Great Lake schooner. There was hundreds of these around years ago, just hauling freight up and down the lakes all over. Now if you get over here, you can see that, see that bell there, a little tiny bell. It's about a quarter of an inch in diameter. And I just turned that on on the lathe too. The anchors, they make the anchors. We don't, we don't make the chain, of course. And then this boat here, the total length of it, from the 
back end to the tip of the sail there is about, about 38 inches long. Now this boat is my pride and joy. This is the best one I've made, the biggest one. It's about 40 inches long. And it's the USS Constitution. Now that boat is still a commission ship. It's in Boston, Massachusetts. I've been on it several times. So I wanted to make one of them. So this is it. So I'm just going to show you some of the details on it. The little boats there, those are all, each one is hand carved like that. All this stuff is. You go around it, and a little boat in the back, that's a pilot's boat. A ca ship captain's boat. He puts that down when he wants to go to shore. And even stuff like this, this all, all works and moves. These boats, you can move those up and down. And there's port, and you see steps going down there, goes on there, and here's another boat which they use for going to shore, pick up supplies and that. And you can see all the all the cannons. I turned all those cannons out on a lathe. I, I can't remember how many of them are. And then if you see right over here, there's a ship's bell made out of bronze. And I made that by turning it out on a lathe. And you see here's more ca cannons here. This was the best battleship we've ever had. It had such firing power. Nobody was, everybody was afraid to go to it. Fought 40 battles and never got hurt. It used to go around the Mediterranean and places like that and get rid of pirate ships. And these are, they call them crow's nests, but what they really are is their battle station. That's where the soldiers, the sharpshooters go up there and they can shoot down from there onto the other ships. And, and you can see on the bottom of each, maybe I can point it out, each one here is a, a little strip. That's a That's a foothold. You stand on that, lean over the arm there, and then you roll the sails up that way. So this is really a, a lot of work in here. I think this is about five, six hundred hours at least to make something like this. It's all the ribs. You start making the ribs and all made by hand. All you want to carve it. You can buy it. You have an exact plan for it. You can buy that. Now I want to point out the flag here. I was able to find a little flag that's got 13 star, 13 stripes and 13 stars. That's the flag they had at that time. And I'll point out some another thing on there. These are called rat lines. They just, they're like steps, like ladders. And you have to tie each one of those knots separately like that. And it takes a long time to tie one of those up like that. And on the bottom here, you can see it. The light isn't too good. But the whole bottom part here, and now you can see it. The whole bottom part, that's all copper. And I had real, real thin copper strips with had glue on the back side, and I put copper on the whole thing like that. Now this is a Santa Maria. That's Columbus's ship, one of the three Columbus ships that he came over here on. Now you got to remember, the ship is only like 85 feet long. And go all the way across an ocean like that. It's just kind of risky. I wouldn't want to do it. But these are, let's get some close up here. They were made pretty much, all ships were made pretty much the same at that time. Anchors, they made, even make the anchors work and everything. And these little ships here, I carved these out. Those little, they're not lifeboats, they're just boats that we can pass them back and forth in the supplies. And then I was able to find a flag that fit that era. So this is, again, it takes a lot of time to make one. Now this is Lewis and Clark's ship that they dragged up the Missouri River. And you imagine they got poles on the side here pushing, and oars on the other side, and even the rudder on here turns back and forth. And they had a, a lot of Indians there, so they had to keep everything hid, all their supplies. So they had boxes underneath all the way through. They had boxes right down in the center there. And all the way through, they had a cannon on the front, which they said they never used. And then they had living quarters, if you can 
see in there just a couple of cots there they had and that was a pretty good ship it came back as a replica of it and and we did travel the whole trail the whole uh, Lewis and Clark trail all the way up to Oregon now I'm gonna point out see a like we sit down there there's cleats on there and what they would do is they would take the poles the long poles they had and they would put them out into the water there and they would push on that pole and then walk on that platform and actually keep pushing the boat forward that's how they because they, they were going upstream all the way back coming back they were able to sail it back so it's a lot of work Okay, that's the end of my boats. So now I'm going to show you a couple of or three wagons that I made. Old time wagons like the Concord Coach and the Chuck Wagon. So I'm going to show you those now. Okay, here's some wagons. Here's a old wagon that tiny, the kind they would take on the Oregon Trail going, pulling by oxen. About 15 miles a day they could make. we are on the front here. It's all authentic. I can see a toolbox here, seat up there. And a, I just made a couple of oxen too. And the back just opens up. And I'm going to turn it around to see the other side of it. Oh, this is a little thing here. You can see inside there's some chickens in there. It's a little chicken coop they carry along. Here's the other side of it. You can see you got a barrel there for water. And I'm going to take the top off now so you can see the actual chassis out the top of it. Everything is all authentic, made just exactly like they would have made them. These are regular, what they call farm wagons. They would just put that box on there and a cover over there and take them out to California. Oregon, Oregon Trail. All these spokes on here, those are all handmade. Each one is carved out by hand. And actually you got a nut on there just like the real ones would have. You can pull, take the wheel off if you want to. Now this wagon is about 12 inches long. The wagon itself, not including the pole on there. Just from, wheel, from the front wheel to the back of the back wheel. 15 inches, I mean 12 inches long. Now this is my favorite. It took me a long time to build it. There's a Concord coach. The yeah, actual doors, doors actually open like this. There's a little, a little latch on here, and the hinges. You know, there's this body is rounded like that. So I had to make the hinges a real little hinges. I have three hinges on there, and it opens up like that. Okay, now I'm going to lift the body right off of the, off the frame. This is a chassis. This has rubber, I mean, leather straps here. And that's what holds it, holds it on there. If you notice, it breaks even work. And all these parts are all me, all carved out by hand. All the metal is all soldered and hammered together. It's a lot of work. At 2005, that's when I built it. This down so you can see the inside of it. There's three seats on each side and one down the center. So you get three people on each side, three down the center, and that's nine people. And then you get three, several up on top, on top here. That's just, just like that, and you got another three, four million people. And the old saying goes, first class, you get first class, second class, third class. Third class, you ride all the way. The second class, if it gets going, you might have to walk. Third class, you not only walk, you might have to push. And these, are, they can only go about 10 miles, 15 miles, 20 at the very most, and you have to change horses. And they usually start galloping out of the town and kind of slow down a little bit there, but... It was a quite a ride at that time. 
These were normally pulled by which by six horses. Now this is the one I like, the little chuck wagon. They had a lot of those out west. They still have a lot of them now. Okay, now I'm going to show you how this, this opens up here. This comes down, and that's where all you got your food. The little tiny drawers in here. The drawers are about an inch and a half long, three eighths of an inch square. And you have a bigger one in here. There you have more dishes in there. Him. And when he's ready to go, you just load everything up. The fire for cooking the wood. Now here's some pictures I found when I was making them here, making a concrete coat here. You can see the wheels all here just in the rough. And you can see all this here. All this metal and all these here, that'd be soldered. All this flat metal, and that's just using these wire, and I pound it down flat till they see this piece of wire because then you get a nice rounded edge on it all the time. You use square, and then you, and then these are all drilled holes, and then it goes through it, and then it's soldered on top. So, um, and here's kind of the cab after it, before it's painted and everything. It looks kind of rough there, and then, but that's what they look like. Here's my little itty bitty drills I use for drilling them out and this is a plan and I'm going to show you where I buy the plans for these wagons I think they're really nice they make, they make a quite a few different kind of milk this company made many of these for Wells Fargo coaches because that's why you notice the name I've got on it is Wells Fargo so I'm going to put that other name on there so we really can buy that stuff now here's where I buy my plans from Hanson Wheel and Wagon in South Dakota. They have a real nice website. Just go in there and go into Google's and go Hanson Wheel and Wagon and you'll find a real all it. And they have a lot of different different kind of plants for all the different carriages and everything. And that's where I got all the three I made. I got all the plants from there. Okay here's what I just call a conglomerate of all my models. There's five boats and three wagons that I've built. So I hope you enjoy them. Thank you for watching.